Jerry of the Circus. Now for Jerry of the Circus. Come over, come over. Just turn up close. There's room for everybody. Turn up close to the platform. That's right. Now make room for the children there, mister. Come right in, little girl. That's right. And today we are offering to you lucky citizens of this fair city a genuine treat. The choicest bit of entertainment that it has ever been your good fortune to witness. And here, folks, on my left, you see the greatest collection of freaks and monstrosities ever gathered on the one piece of canvas. And now allow me to present Tiny Irene. Come up here, Irene. <laughs> there she is, folks. 365 pounds of human flesh by the small admission fee of 25 cents would hardly buy the dessert for one of Irene's meals. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, in direct contrast, let me introduce Major Mike, the smallest midget in the world today. The Major makes Tom Thumb look like a giant. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Randall. Hello, Haley. Yes, sir, I repeat, the smallest human in the world today. Am I right, Mr. Randall? You're all right, Mr. Haley. There you are, folks. The owner of Randall's Greater Circus folks is for my seemingly unbelievable... Hello, Jim. Uh, hello, Mr. Randall. How's it going? Oh, it'll be a sellout when we get the spill from the midway. Uh, it'll be a sellout for tonight, too, if this weather holds up. Say, uh, Jim, uh, drop by the office wagon after the show. I want to talk about something. Uh, Jason says one of his guns has disappeared. Oh, the lion tamer. Mm. That's bad. It's bad business having a gun around loose in a circus lot. Yes, and I'm not going to put up with it. The first rule I ever made was that only wild animal trainers could carry guns. I've got to find that missing gun, and whoever's got it will hear plenty from me. Does Jason suspect anyone? No, but I do. He and Lorenz have been pretty friendly lately. Oh, you mean that nice fellow? Yes. Well, I wouldn't trust him any farther than I could throw an elephant. That's right. But you'll have to admit Lorenz is a big attraction. A big attraction to the audience, maybe, but a lot of grief for us. Yeah. Well, thank heavens I've got a right-hand man I can trust. Oh, thanks, boss. You can count me until the last blowdown, and don't you forget it. Thanks, Jim. Uh, say, boss, there's a kid looking for you. Oh, well, what does the boy want? I uh, don't know, but he's been hanging around since before lunch. He's got some kind of a letter for you. Oh, where is he? Uh, there he is, boss, over there by Larry. See him? Oh, oh yes. All right, thanks. Folks, the mere guest. Come, gentlemen. Under which shell is a little black pea? Money never grows in your pocket. Hello, know? young man. Looking for me? Sorry, but we're not taking on any new hands. Gee, so you're Mr. Randall. Hmm. Yeah. I'd have known you anywhere. Dad sure described you. Oh, I forgot. I got a letter for you. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Oh, uh, well, just a minute, son. Well, not Tim Dugan's boy. Well, sure enough. <laughs> You've got your dad's grin all over your little freckled face. Well, well, well. <laughs> Yes, I, you know, I, I heard some time back that Tim had a boy. Let's see what's on his mind here. Uh, and uh, so, if things don't break, and I'm gone before you get here, 
take care of my boy. He's been brought up with horses, and the circus is in his blood. He'll tell you all about it. Well, uh, where is your dad? He's not... He, he died last week. Oh. Well, I haven't seen him for years. Uh, Tim Dugan. Great showman, your dad, and don't you ever forget it. Well, what's your name, son? Jerry. Jerry Dugan. And so you... You want to join the circus, hmm? I sure do, Mr. Randall. Well, what can you do, Jerry? Well, Dad thought, taught me some tumbling before he got sick, and then, of course, I, I worked a lot with horses. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And after Mother died, the doctor said Dad couldn't do much hard work, so he and I got a job taking care of some racehorses. Dad said I was a big help, too. Well, that's swell. Now, look, Jerry, we're folding here tonight, and I've got a lot of things to attend to. You run along home now and get your duds. I'll put you up somehow. You'll probably have to carry water for the horses at first, but, well, we'll see. I, I'm i sorry, Mr. Randall, but I I haven't got any things. I, well, well, what do you mean? Well, you see, after we were rooming in a funny little place, and, well, after, well, I heard the landlady say she couldn't keep me any longer. You see, Dad already owed her more than a week's rent. Mm, nice woman, huh? She said something to a neighbor about a, an orphan asylum, and, well, well, Rags and me, we lit out that night, and we've just been hiding daytimes waiting for the circus to come to town. Oh, well, uh, this dog here isn't Rags by any chance. Yeah, isn't he a beauty? <laughs> He's pure Airedale and cheap dog, and Dad said something about a police dog. <laughs> Shouldn't wonder if your dad was right. <laughs> He's awful smart. <laughs> kind of little for having such big ancestors, don't you think? Come to think of it. Dad did say something about poodle blood. <laughs> That's why he's so quick at tricks. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not so sure I can put up the dog, but come on now, I want you to meet Bumps. I... Oh, well, I... I guess I can't go after all. Hmm? Golly, I... Mm, well, now what? <laughs> well, you see, me and Rags, well... Well, we've sort of been taking care of each other, and I guess we still... <laughs> well, all right, come on. We'll take him. No boy's worth his salt without a dog anyhow. Come along now. We'll catch Bumps while he's making up. Bumps? Who's Bumps, Mr. Randall? The greatest clown in the business. You knew your dad, too. I guess he'll be in his wagon. Oh, so that's where you sleep. In wagons, huh? No, no, but uh, some of the wagons are used for dressing rooms. We all sleep on the train. Oh. Bumps shares his dressing room with Decker and Lorenz. I guess you won't be in the way there. Decker and Lorenz? What do they do? A knife-throwing act. And a good one, too. Gee... Imagine really being with a circus. <laughs> well, here we are, Jerry. Here's Bump's makeup wagon. In. Hello, Bumps. Well, hello, Sam. Uh, I think you can make room for this boy. It's Tim Dugan's boy. His name's Jerry. Tim Dugan? Mm -hmm. oh, I haven't heard of him for years. Put it here. Any son of Tim Dugan ought to be all right. <laughs> the old acrobat, how is he? He uh, died, Bumps, last week. Uh, no. Lord. <clears throat> oh, uh, this your dog, son? Yeah. Isn't he a beauty? Where's the friendly little mutt? Does he go with the boys, Sam? Yeah, I guess he does. <laughs> Isn't that funny, Jerry? I've been wishing for a dog for weeks. Have you? I sure have. Looks as if he thinks I might do, too, curling up on my feet like yeah. that. <laughs> he sure made himself at home. Well, I'm going to be tied up to laugh at the show, Bumps. Keep your eye on Jerry. Sure will, Sam. Uh, you can go and watch the show, Jerry. I'll tell the man on the gate to let you in. I'll see you later. Gee, thanks for everything, Mr. Randall. All right, then. So... So you're Tim Dugan's boy, huh? Oh, wait till I finish this Mind makeup. Mind watch? No, of course not. Gee, that's funny pink stuff. Don't you have any lips at all? No, just a thin line. Why do you put all that white stuff around your eyes? Oh, makes them look blank, you know, kind of sad-like. What's that lumpy nose made out of? <laughs> well, that's putty. Isn't it uncomfortable? 
Gee, you look funny. <laughs> Rags down is all right. It's still the same fella. It's still Bob. Oh, that's it, Rags. Wags your tail, boy. You'll see plenty of makeup before you're much older. Gee, I, I don't see how you can do it so fast. Hey, listen, Jerry. When you put on one makeup for nearly 25 years, you'll be able to do it in a couple of shakes, too. Hey, stop it. Oh, oh, hello, Lorenz. Uh, meet Jerry, a friend of mine, and, and his dog, Rag. Ah, I don't like dogs. Go on, beat it. Oh, here, wait a minute, Lorenz. Jerry and his dog are going to share the wagon with him. Uh, you think? Uh, the boss thinks. Uh, now, where did Decker put the knives? How many times do I tell him to put them in the top drawer of this top box? Uh, well, here they are, in the bottom drawer. This drawer is not for knives. Ray, come away from there. Well, it's a curious little monkey, isn't it? Too curious. What are you looking at? There's nothing for dogs to see in this drawer. Anybody else either, and that goes for you too, boy. This top box is my private property. Get out of here, dog! Ray! Oh, don't kick him. Crowl at me, eh? Ray! Hey, Lorenz, drop that knife, you fool! Don't throw that knife at my dog! I'll fix them so I won't growl. Let go my arm, you. I won't till you put down that knife. You little fool. Don't you strike that boy, Lorenz. Oh, oh he bit me. That cur bit me right on the wrist, too. On my throwing Oh, now, don't get excited, Lorenz. It's just a little scratch. Scratch nothing. I fixed that dog. Oh, oh, oh there goes the opening number, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Now go on. Go on now and see the show. Yeah, I, I'm... I mean, I feel... Bit. Well, now, you come back here after the show's over, Jerry. Come on, Rag. Now, listen, Lorenz, you've got to control that temper of yours. You can't be throwing knives around. Uh, rat that dog, tearing my wrist. He could have crippled me so I could never throw another knife. Oh, but he didn't. Just the same, I'm not going to dress in a place with a dog that will bite me every time I turn around. Mm, uh, <coughs> oh, golly, it's time for my act. Uh, i got to get on over to the main tent. <laughs> and don't you worry about the dog, Lorenz. You and he'll be good friends yet. <laughs> friends, nothing. He won't have time to be friends. I'll get rid of that dog before we leave this place if it's the last thing I do. Mm -hmm.